Right, so one country that is very dear to the hearts of many Ghanaians is Nigeria. We encounter Nigerians in all spheres of our social life. Talk about music, talk about soccer, movies, even in business, trade, international relations and politics. Nigerians are always at the other side of the divide. It comes to me as no surprise at all because it takes not more than 40 minutes to move from Kotoka International Airport here in Ghana to get to the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, Nigeria. On Diplomatic Call this evening, we are proud, privileged, and of course honored to play host to the head of the entire Nigerian representation here in Ghana, um, the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, His Excellency Ademola Olusheyi Onafuokan. Sir, thank you very much for having you on the show. Always a pleasure. And thanks for inviting us into your office. You're most welcome. Nice place. Really? Yes. You're welcome. All right, so within the next 30 minutes, His Excellency will take us through Ghana-Nigeria relations as far as trade, uh, politics, education is concerned. He will tell us about himself. He will suggest the means where these two countries could collaborate to better the lives of their citizens. And of course, we also talk about the Nigerian community here in Ghana. But that would be all after this break. Nothing to fear whenever you're near Cause it's perfect when the family's here The perfect picture in the perfect frame Cause without your life we'll not be the same You pick me up whenever I'm down Everything's perfect whenever you're around You keep me smiling, I'll never frown Together we'll the secret of how to be a perfect family has been uncovered. Come to the Chiropractic Wellness Center and join the perfect family today. CWC, creating wellness. I said, so let's start by talking about trade, business, and investment. Of course, trade cooperation is the biggest highlight of Ghana-Nigeria relations. How has it developed over the years? Indeed, trade and investment cooperation is the in thing around the world now, less of politics, more of economic survival. And I think Nigeria and Ghana have been trading even before the colonial era. And uh, ever since our independence, we've always related trade-wise. I can boldly say to you that up to last year, we were Ghana's biggest trading partners before the Chinese came and dethroned us. But if you look at the total value, the real value of those goods that are taken across the borders, tertiary businesses that is not documented, I think we are by far Ghana's trading partner. And we are relishing this because Ghana, Ghanaians are our brothers. We have cousins here, we have wives, we have daughters, we have brothers. Ditto in Nigeria. I have Ghanaians living in my house back home in Nigeria, and I enjoyed them for 14 years they've been living there. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful world between Nigeria and Ghana. Yes, yeah, indeed, um, the GIPC reports also indicates that Nigeria is part of the top five investor countries in Ghana as of the last quarter of um, 2013. What is the current volume of trade between the two nations? It's huge. I think as of the last... Um, Count in terms of investment, I think Nigeria has an investment of what, about 1.7 billion dollars in Ghana, See. and uh, this transverses every facet of the economy be it banking, be it real estate, insurance, tertiary trade, manufacturing, Ghanaian Casapreco going to Nigeria. RLG has just started a 10 million. Uh, telephone assembly plant in Oshun State, Nigeria. We have too much interwoven between ourselves and uh, the, 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 between us, between Ghana and Nigeria, we control 60% of West African trade. 
yeah. between the two of us. Some would attribute the rise in the trade relations to um, uh, your tenure as High Commission of Nigeria to Ghana. What role have you been playing in all this? I won't say to my tenure. I met it there, but I just built on it. People have worked very hard long before I came here. Uh, I'm just lucky that a lot of it is coming to fruition now, but people before me, my predecessors in office did a lot of good work, and I must give them kudos for that. They made it very easy for me, but I'm excited. I'm very close. I'm an economic ambassador. I'm very close to the organized private sector, to the business community, both in Ghana here and in Nigeria, because I've always found myself on the economic desk, and that excites me a lot. And uh, I'm so willing to do whatever possible to promote economic relations so that we can put enough food on the table in West, Af in West Africa. Any challenges you could easily think of? Well, the challenges we have is the man-made, surmountable trade barriers of taking goods across our borders. In terms of transportation, we have those challenges. In terms of the border gate itself, experiences at the border, at the entry points, we have challenges. And then the local laws of countries, you know, which most times take precedence over ECOWAS, integration treaty, which is supposed to bring our economies together. It's also a challenge, but I know with deeper political will, with deeper commitment on our principles, I think it's a question of time the trade relationship between Ghana and indeed in the rest of West Africa will be very fluid and uh, everybody will be a benefactor. Are, are we still going to see more of um, uh, trade and investment this year considering the current economic situation of factors here in Ghana? I think so. Um, Renaissance Capital, RENCAP, has just declared that Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. Um, Fifty billion dollars ahead of South Africa. Interesting. It just came out a couple of days ago, and uh, in the whole of Africa, in terms of investment and business, Ghana is number one destination, and I'm very happy to be part of it because my focus has always been, since I was in the postgraduate school, when I discovered that the intra-African trade was two percent, to see. What I'll be able to achieve someday when I became a diplomat, what I'll be able to achieve in raising that uh, level of uh, trade activity. And I'm happy today that a lot of people have contributed and have pushed the ball a little bit myself to make sure that uh, there are business opportunities and the economy is growing. I'm very close to the trade minister in Ghana, the former one who is now the trade, who is now the foreign minister, the present one. Arua Idris is a jolly good fellow. We talk business all the time. I'm friendly with Mrs. Treber of the GIPC. She's also close to the Nigerian IPC. And uh, we do a lot of things together. And, and how are the Nigerian businesses faring in Ghana? I don't think they are complaining. I think they are happy to be here. Ghana is just like you said, one hour, 20 minutes to Abuja, I mean Kotoka, and 45 minutes to Lagos. So it's easy and then the food is the same, the climate is the same. We are the same people, only borders dividing us. So I think they are happy to be here, otherwise they would not be here. Nothing to fear whenever you near. Cause it's perfect when the family is here. The perfect picture in the perfect
secret of how to be a perfect family has been uncovered. Come to the Chiropractic Wellness Center and join the perfect family today. CWC, creating wellness. Hi, if you just join us, this is still Diplomatic Call, and my guest tonight on the show is His Excellency Ademola Olusheyi Unafokan, the Nigerian High Commissioner here in Ghana. And uh, say, before the break, you were telling us about um, education in Nigeria, but now let's talk about other aspects of Ghana Nigeria relations. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the high points of our relationship? Exactly. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for instance, has visited Ghana twice since I got here, less than two years ago. And the president of Ghana, Dito, has been to Nigeria at least two times. That doesn't come easy. That speaks volume. Uh, in most countries, for, for ambassadors, you'll be lucky for your principal to visit even once. And I've had the rare opportunity of hosting my president twice and the vice president once. Interesting. I think I've been very lucky. Our relationship is very solid. Any low points? We do, we do a lot in terms of trade between us. Low points, I would say no. The only low points that nearly occurred was when we had the traders crisis and the maturity at the end of the day prevailed, both on the Nigerian side and very much on the Ghanaian side. And we've put that behind us for now and we've moved on to better things, to prosperity for two countries. Okay, and it's still on trade. So if there's a Nigerian, or sorry, there's a Ghanaian business um, who wants to test the Nigerian markets or invest in Nigeria, how does that business person start the whole process? It is very, very simple. We have, we have what you call a one uh, shop stop in Nigeria, which is the Nigeria Investment Promotion Council. I was able to arrange a meeting for the GIPC chairperson the other day to visit. All you have to do is go to their website, look at what they have. The procedure is very straightforward and simple. Get in touch with them, they arrange you to, they will assist to set up everything. And uh, you don't have to waste your time looking for them. It's certain and it's government backed fully. So I think it's rather easy. That's why we were able to attract, in 2012, about a billion dollars direct foreign investment. And last year, the same. Every day, people flock to Nigeria to do business. We're always teasing Ghanaians by saying, Ghana is the gateway, Nigeria is the destination. <laughs> I, I think between Nigeria and Ghana, we have a lot in common, and uh, we show up ourselves. Ghana is very supportive, and Nigeria is also very supportive. We encourage business between our two countries. Like I told you earlier on, RLG is just building a factory to tap into the 170 million market. Yes, I was just about to ask that. So how do Ghanaian businesses take advantage of uh, the huge Nigerian population? All the Casapreco drinks, Alomo and the rest that you manufacture here. Yeah. I guess 80% of it end up in the Nigerian market. And uh, a lot of other things. If you find Kente in Nigeria, it's from Ghana. And a lot of other small, small chips, computer chips, people come here to buy it. Students exchange. A lot of things. I mean, we, we know, yes, there's a lot between the two countries, but are Nigerians receptive to Ghanaian businesses? Oh, you can ask that question again. Why not? 